Hello, in this video I want to show you how you can use the website code.org to create very simple mobile phone applications. Code.org as a website is a really good resource if you're learning how to code. You can see it's used by lots of students and teachers and it's got full sort of tutorials and things built into it. But what I'm going to focus on is using their tools called App Lab to create, without any very little coding experience, be able to create some applications for a phone. So to get started, you would need to create an account. So you would sign in, create an account, uh, and that will allow you then to access and create your own apps. The app we're going to create today, I'll show you it kind of working here. This is what App Lab looks like when you get into it. You have a phone, a simulated mobile phone here on the left hand side. You create your application using these drag and drop elements here and drag and drop bits of code, but I'll show you all of that later. To test your code, you would press the run button on here. And then in this case, the app that we're going to create is a really simple game, the Tappy Tap app. It's got three screens, start screen here and home screen with an introduction and tells you a little bit about what we're going to, what it's going to do. We will start that there. And the idea is you've got to click on the blue dot as many times as you can within a period of time. If you click on the red dot, you'll lose score. If you clicked on the blue dot, then you'll gain a point. Uh, one of the feature it has is that as you play the game, the blue dot is going to get smaller the, the further you go into the game. And obviously here you can see the final screen, the third one, which will display your score. Probably one of the nicest things about App, App Lab is that how easy it is to, for students to share their code with different people uh, and you know allow other people to see what it is that they've kind of created. So what I'm going to show you here is how we can send our apps using a QR code or a link to a phone. And then you can go and quite simply just follow the QR code and you're able to be playing the app on your phone. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, once you've logged into App Lab, you click on the create icon at the top here and choose uh, App Lab to begin a new project. Quick overview, you've got the simulated mobile phone over here on the left hand side. You've got the area which is going to be your workspace when you're dragging and dropping code. Uh, you've got two different views. We won't be looking at the third one today. We're going to look at the design and code. So the design is the area where you will drag and drop all your user interface elements. So we're going to be using a button and a label. And we're going to be using some images down the bottom here uh, to create part of our user interface you simply drag and drop the things that you want on there when you do this each of the components that you drop on there will have a series of properties that relate to them so for example we dropped a label which we can use to display text in here i'm going to change the default text that is in there to be happy tap app to be the, the title uh, of our application and i'm going to go in and you can change things like the the font color and the font size, uh, etc., to to be whatever it is that you're kind of making. We can recenter that there, and if we want to resize it a little bit, so we can get all the text in one line. Now, for each of the things that we've dropped on there, they've all been given an ID, and it normally makes sense to sort of give these a meaningful name particularly if they are going to be used within the code, if it's going to interact with the code. So this label here that is just a title, I'm actually just going to leave that one because uh, I'm not going to be changing this or needing to access it in the code. But the button that we've put on here, this is going to be the, the button that starts the game. So I'm going to call it Start Button. And you'll see later on why it's kind of useful to give this a meaningful name. Text in this one, I'm going to choose Start game and i'm gonna once again maybe change a little bit of the things on this to make it a little bit different let's change the color and let's make the button a little bit bigger uh, etc here um i'm gonna also put another label in here and put some simple instructions in here of how you play the game put the blue dots and it's quick as yes, you can and again we can do a few things like sort of make that text box a different size i can align the text uh, to suit what we need 
uh, that'll do. Again, I'm not going to be accessing this within the code, so I'll just leave this as label two. And what we're going to have here is we're just going to have some placeholder images. Now, when you put an image in, it's by default going to make it be 100 by 100, um, and we can choose the image. Now, a few different ways we could do this. We could upload an image as a file. We could uh, find an image URL on the web, so we can open up a, when you go to Google Images or something, you say open that image in a new tab and can copy their web address from there. But for what we're going to be doing on this application, we're going to use some of the icons that are built into it. And it has an icon called dots uh, that was going to allow us to uh, dot that is going to allow us to have a sort of a circle that we can kind of use. Um, icons themselves, we can do things like change the colors of them. Uh, and we're going to have a blue dot in our game uh, that the user would click on. And in here, I'm going to pop a label in here just to indicate to the user that when they're playing this game, uh, if they click on the blue dots, they'll get a, a point, uh, a plus point for clicking on the blue ones. Let's change the text color so we can see that a bit better to be blue. And maybe bring the font size up a little bit on that as well. Uh, and I'm just going to do the same again. I'm going to bring over here uh, an image and I'm going to choose the same again, an icon that is the dot and change its color to be red and add some text inside of it that is going to be a minus one to indicate the user would lose some score if they were to click on the red dots. Okay, and that's kind of the, the main bit of the user interface that I need for this home page completed now. Um, before I move on though, the, the screen itself, if I click away from any of the elements here, so I'm seeing the uh, properties for the screen, I am going to need to access that in the code later on. So I'm going to give this a sensible name here, call it home screen uh, there. Um, so let's just use these drag and drop elements here to create a user interface for the home screen. Um, next, we need to think about the, the game screen itself. So what I'm going to do is going to say that I would like to create a new screen for our game. So here I can click on new screen. Uh, this is going to be my game screen, so I will give it a sensible name. Again, you'll see later on I'm going to need to access this in the code. Um, and what I'm going to do for this one is if I switch back to my home screen, I'd like to put some text on there. I don't want to use the, I want to use the same font size and color that I've maybe used on the home screen. So from the home screen, I can say copy that element over to the game screen. And it will go away and do that, copy it over. Um, but this will be when we're playing the game, I'm going to say click on the blue. Okay, it's just giving the user some instructions, further instructions as they're playing the game. And I can see as well when we're developing this, when we end up on that screen. I'm going to fit in one go. No, I might have to just make the font size be a little bit smaller and let that fit in. Okay, uh, whilst we're at it then, if we're making new screens, we might as well make the third screen as well, which is going to be our score screen. And like so, and I might just do the same as I did a minute ago. I'm going to copy over by clicking on the element there, copy that over to the score screen. And in here, we're going to say your score is, and then in the uh, game as it's being played, uh, we'll also add in, obviously, the code that will display an actual score uh, in there. So that's a quick start, just using creating lots of user interface elements that we're going to need uh, throughout this game. But let's have a little quick look now at creating some of the code. Probably the simplest bit of code to start with would be when we run our program, if I run it here, we've got a button, but at the moment that obviously does nothing because we haven't told it what to do. Uh, so we would want to make this button uh, make us set the screen to be the game screen when we play it. So I'm going to click on the button, so this is selected, I've got all of its properties up here. And if I go across to the events tab here, you can see it understands that because this is a button, it has an action where somebody can click on it. Um, and it has a little bit of helper here to say, 
what would you like to do when that button is clicked? So on event of start button being clicked, we can log to the console that that button is clicked. Let's just run that and see if it does what it suggests. And App had, App Lab has this idea of an area that you can print to when you're creating your programs or log uh, things to as you're creating them. So it just shows us that that is now sort of working uh, and it is outputting things onto the log of the console there. Uh, I'm going to delete that command by just dragging and dropping it into the code here uh, because what we would like this to happen is the screen to be set to be the game screen. So all of our code elements here are color coded depending on the type of uh, code block they are but we're working with the user interface control so we want to set the screen to be the game screen by default it's going to choose something called screen one but here we can go in and change that to now be the game screen so when we run our code again now we should be able to click on the start uh, game button and that will take us onto the area where the game is going to be Okay, I think that's probably more than enough to kind of get people started. So I suggest you probably pause uh, the video at this point and see if you can go away, create the user interface and add the bit of code that will move it onto the game screen.